Can you reverse gray hair? Does stress cause your hair to turn gray? Today, I am answering all of your questions on gray hair. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis. I'm a board certified dermatologist in Northern California, and I'm here to help you understand your skin and your hair and to find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. When it comes to our appearance, hair is certainly one way that we communicate things about ourselves. And the change in hair color from black or brown or blonde or red to gray is a signal that someone is getting older. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. I don't personally have a problem with gray hair, but I do find that a lot of people are curious about ways to either delay developing gray hair or to fix it. And that's what I wanna focus in on today. The reason our hair has pigment in the first place is because deep in our hair root, we have the production of something called melanin. Melanin is the thing that gives our skin color as well as our hair. And you can create two types of pigment. You can create eumelanin or pheomelanin. Eumelanin tends to be dark brown or black, whereas pheomelanin tends to be blonde or red. And how much eumelanin and pheomelanin you make in that combination is what determines your hair color. Now, when the hair is going gray, essentially what's happening there is you have decreased melanin production. So you are not making as much pigment and you are not transferring that produced pigment into the hair strand. Over time, your melanocytes or your melanin producing cells not only produce less melanin, but you can actually have fewer melanocytes in total. And as those melanocytes in your hair follicle get depleted, your ability to produce pigment for your hair also lessens. Eventually, the entire melanocyte population within the hair can be wiped out, and at that point, you can no longer grow pigmented hair. Aside from their hair losing pigment as it becomes gray, it also tends to change in texture. People will often comment on their hair feeling more rough or coarse or textured. And we don't fully understand why people have such a change in hair texture as it becomes gray, but it's at least in part thought to be due to less sebum or oil production that normally coats and softens the hair. Now, the number one thing that's going to determine if you go gray and actually when you go gray is your genetics. So if you have a parent that went gray earlier on in life, you're more likely to go gray early as well. Of course, age also plays a very large role. So as we get into our 50s and 60s, more people will naturally develop gray hair. And it's estimated that 50% of the population will have 50% of their hair turn gray by the age of 50. So you can think of graying hair as a really normal or natural part of the aging process. Process. However, some people will go gray earlier on in their life. If someone is going gray in their 20s or 30s, that's typically considered premature graying. And yes, that can be determined by genetics, but there can be underlying medical things going on that lead to that graying as well. There also may be some variability in the age that you start turning gray based on your ethnicity. So for example, Caucasian people are thought to go gray a bit earlier, like in their early 30s, while those of Asian descent tend to go gray in their late 30s. And those who are of African descent tend to go gray later in life, like in their 40s. Now, aside from graying being a natural part of the aging process, there are certainly other things that can contribute to going gray faster. For example, certain vitamin deficiencies, which are rare in the developed world, but can happen like deficiencies in vitamin B6, B12, or folate, as well as iron or zinc may lead to the development of gray hair. Also, those who have severe malnutrition and specifically protein malnutrition, so not enough protein in the diet, can develop gray hair. It's also been associated with immune conditions like vitiligo, where you actually have your immune cells attacking pigment in the hair follicle, as well as things like thyroid disease and pernicious anemia that can give you gray hair prematurely. And pernicious anemia is where your body cannot absorb B12 and therefore you get a B12 deficiency and then gray hair. But if you put medical conditions aside, as well as the natural aging process and genetics, there is one major determinant of gray hair and that is stress. And it kind of sounds cliche, right? Like we think of stressful times and we're like, ooh, that gave me some gray hairs, but that actually might be true. And when we think about stress causing graying of the hair, one of the most prominent kinds of stress we experience is oxidative stress. And you've probably heard me talk about antioxidants in skincare to help block oxygen-free radicals from wreaking havoc in the skin, but the same goes for damaging the melanocytes or the pigment-producing cells in the hair. So for example, oxidative stress can be caused by UV radiation, smoking, pollution, but also 
also normal cellular metabolism. And as we get older, we can develop more oxygen-free radicals that can lead to more damage of the pigment-producing cells in the hair. Speaking of smoking, of course, that is inducing oxidative stress throughout the tissues, but including in the hair. And it's thought that people who smoke are much more likely to go gray prematurely. There was also a pretty landmark study published in the journal Nature in 2020, indicating that the stress response of fight or flight can actually induce graying of the hair. What this study showed is that when someone is undergoing a fight or flight response and they get this surge of norepinephrine coursing through their system, that norepinephrine can cause permanent damage to the pigment producing cells of the hair. And this is a really important delineation because for a long time, people thought it was the stress hormone cortisol that led to graying, but it seems that norepinephrine plays a significant role here. And we always wanna know what is leading to the graying because when we're thinking about reversing graying or preventing graying, we need to know what's causing it in the first place. A really notable public figure who likely experienced this type of graying is Barack Obama. There are these pictures that compare what his hair looked like at the beginning of his presidency and at the end, and he has gone significantly more gray and likely that is due to some degree of fight or flight response over time. So is there actually anything you can do to stop your hair from going gray? delay it from going gray, or reverse gray hair once you have it? And the real answer to that is there probably will be in the future because we are just on the cusp of fully understanding why people turn gray in the first place. But I would say that right now there are no definitive treatments that someone can do that will consistently reverse their gray hair. One recent paper published in 2021 looked at all of the cases of hair repigmentation that had been reported. So there are cases out there of people who had gray hair and then grew back their dark hair over time. And these were all cases in which the patient was on some type of medication for cancer treatment or was undergoing some type of therapy, not targeting gray hair specifically, but had repigmentation of their hair as a side effect. And what that paper really tried to explore is, well, what things helped repigment the hair? What are those potential mechanisms? And how can we harvest those potential mechanisms to benefit people in a cosmetic way in the future? And what it really boils down to is figuring out how to augment the immune environment around the hair. So right now there are some products out there that are marketed towards the reversal of gray hair. And some in consumer testing have shown that it has helped. But to my knowledge, there have been no double blind placebo controlled trials to show that these products work. One thing we do recognize is if you are going to invest in trying to reverse some of your gray hair, that should be done earlier on in the graying process. As your hair becomes more gray, your pigment producing cells in the hair follicle become less active and become fewer in number. And you're a lot less likely to respond to anti-graying treatments if you don't have a good reservoir of melanocytes there. By far and away at this point in time, the best thing that you can do to reduce the amount of gray hair you have is to lead the healthiest lifestyle possible. When you reduce stress in the body and stress on the hair, you're able to preserve that pigment more readily. Now, again, we are gonna be fighting against things like genetics and genetics almost always win out over any lifestyle modifications that you are going to take. But if we're trying to make steps in the right direction, that's the way to go. And of course, there is absolutely nothing wrong with dyeing your hair. I'm not saying you need to get rid of your gray hair, but I feel like a lot of people have this hesitation or feel like they're sort of like betraying themselves by dyeing their hair. But as a cosmetic dermatologist, people come into my office all the time wanting to look younger or look as young as they feel. And one of the first steps you can do to appear younger is to dye your hair. Also, you don't have to worry about plucking out a few gray hairs if you're just dealing with a couple on your head. I feel like a lot of us have heard that old wives tale about if you pull out a gray hair, two will grow in its place and that's never been proven. I would say in general, it's not great to pull your hair out because it can cause inflammation or even permanent trauma to the hair follicle, but here and there when done gently is just fine. If you've used any products or had any treatments to help with your gray hair, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Also, if you've chosen to keep your hair gray or dye it, I'm curious why or why not you have made that decision. So please share. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.